Hello everybody. Welcome to the 10th International Worldwide Summit in the session which is called Predicting Post-COVID Passenger Behavior. We will host very interesting speakers coming from all around the world and you can see them now. I'm Marc Guigon, a passenger director at UIC International Union of Railways. I'm responsible for passenger activities, including development of high-speed rail in the world, railway stations, ticket distribution, regional and commuter train services, and tourism in trains. I'm also coordinator of Latin American region and coordinator of the UIC COVID-19 Task Force. Today, we will have speakers, very high-level and ranked speakers. First one will be Uri uh, Stalheim, who is the CEO of AC, ASE, sponsor of the event. Growth and capacity analytics and management is the core expertise of this company, AZAE, with a, a strong experience in the public transportation industry. ASE uh, specialized in optimizing crowd transport hubs and complex multimodal platforms. ASE offers a unique tool set of pedestrian counting systems, simulations, data science, and IoT for station capacity issues. Their current clients include the leading rail transport and infrastructure companies, as well as governmental agencies throughout Europe and beyond. The systems have been in daily operation throughout the last 10 years and continue to do so. so the specialists have developed a profound understanding of the rail industry, aligning innovations with the needs of our station management clients. So AAC is sponsor of this session. Other speakers will be Ali, Ali Al Oliani from Saudi Railway Company, Hello Ali, uh, Nicolas Patin from Société du Grand Paris from France. Hassan Al Mutawa from Roads and Transport Authority in the United Arab Emirates, and Andreas Melhorn from Siemens uh, from Siemens Mobility in Germany. So I will introduce them more when they will give their speech. You can ask also the audience uh, questions for the debate after the presentation. Please type your question in the question panel, and you can also like the questions which seems more important for you. You can also download your, all the presentations in the handout uh, section, which is in the control panel. As you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has deeply affected the society worldwide. The COVID-19 crisis was unforeseeable, very deep and global. We were not prepared for it, and we have the feeling that it is a harbinger of profound changes in the whole society. General opinion is that the crisis has generated major changes in the way the society is developing, at least current trends, which were already perceived as being strongly accelerated. Therefore, when the crisis will overcome, the society, the society will work differently. This new functioning will be looked at the new normal society. The future normality may be characterized as the availability of rail actors to adapt themselves and the flexibility of the institutions restructure this sector. One must keep in mind that rail transport economy is based on a system specifically adapted to mass transport. When the volume of demand fails and the occupancy rate of trends drops, the economic models is in trouble because more than easy, any of its competitors, rail has many fixed costs and uses long life assets. Rail traffic has proven that it plays an important role in times of pandemic as passenger and freight transports remaining safe, resilient and reliable. However, the year 2020 has shown that the railway system is not only sustainable and safe, but also very resilient. There are many reasons why the mobility may change. The environmental awareness may weigh on the expansion of the market and modify the shares of the various transport modes. 
This can be intensified by new regulations in favor of the most environmentally friendly means of transport. The strong impulse given to home working in another, is another example and enhance already existing trends. Whereas the digitalization of the society helps this new labor organization, it also propels remote meeting as an alternate to transport. Another consequence will also be the housing location as desurbanization, which could decrease commuter transport and increase some long distance journeys to go from home to office once a week, for example. So the rail sector must navigate the corresponding round of opportunities and threats of the post-COVID transport market. In this framework, UIC is working with a consultant Roland Berger and coordinate with key players in order to draft a white paper document which will be available this summer and which will give recommendations at the horizon 2025. So the question of this panel is, can we predict post-COVID-19 passenger behavior? Maybe we will have some answers now and the current speakers around the table are impatient to provide some elements of answers. Our first speakers, speaker will be Uri Stahlheim from ASE, uh, CEO of ASE, sponsor of this session. He is specialized in the quantitative analysis and optimizations of dynamic processes. After his studies, he completed an internship in the research department of the Swiss National Bank. Afterwards, as a consultant at Savannah Simulations AG, he developed models for the dynamic description of content management systems. Later on, he designed and developed demand forecasts and concepts for optimizing traffic flows at SBB Cargo in Switzerland. So Yuri will speak about COVID-19 and new uh, perspectives. And you will have the floor just now, Uri, and uh, I propose to launch the poll of, of Uri just now, just before the, uh, the, the speak. So the poll, as you see here, you have 30 seconds to, <clears throat> to answer the question. There is a question which is, how do you expect passenger volume in public transport will develop? <clears throat> With three answers. After COVID-19 vaccination, passenger volumes will return to near 2019 levels. The second option is even after COVID-19 vaccination, passenger volumes will stay permanently low due to trust issues and other trends. And there will be a shift in passenger flows that depends on many factors. Each line and station will need to be re-evaluated. So you have to click on the button on the left of the question and you have uh, 30 seconds i do not have that here but maybe it's terminated now so uh, you you can go in the poll section uh, where, where it is written closed uh, and, and you see that, that until now there are 16 responses and uh, the, the majority C, then A, then B. Maybe you can comment this result. You can switch on your microphone, Yuri, if you would like. Uh, maybe you can show the result in, in the public uh, area. So. Okay, um, thank you and welcome to my uh, presentation. Um, I would, uh, first of all, uh, would like to introduce ASC. We are a Swiss-based uh, company. Um, we are in Zurich, Switzerland, and we believe in pl public transport as the future mobility, uh, sustainable mobility. And that's why we believe the public transport will stay and will be a very strong uh, basis of a national transportation strategy. And my company has specialized um, in transportation hubs. 
we see the hubs not only as a transportation uh, surface, it's also combining retail, public spaces and offices. And this is why the traffic and pedestrian flows in those hubs are influenced by many factors which are not only from the transportation um, demand driven. So who is ASC? First, our company, we are since 15 years uh, specialized in collecting data which are concerning uh, pedestrian flows. We are concentrating ourselves on retail and, of course, um, transportation hubs. We collect the data, we aggregate them, and we generate insights out of this data. So our systems are installed in many stations around Europe and also some in Asia. This is why we have now the fortunate chance to look at those data long time and see what the effects of COVID-19 are very quantitatively. And this is what I want to show you right now. So what we see here is an aggregation of many stations which just show the yearly uh, frequencies of pedestrian flows in Central Europe, which you see in January starts low, it rises up. Then we see here the effect of summer holidays, and then it goes very highly up till the end of the year. So this is a normal curve, 2019, and what we saw worldwide is an increasing uh, this curve was regularly, but it was increased by one, two, three, four percent, depending on the position of the station. Was it a city center station? Was it a agglomeration with a lot of development or close to an airport, which became more and more important? What happened in 2020? So the year 2020 started as normal, as we see here on the left side of my picture. Then COVID-19 started, and in the middle of March, we had this drop of flows due to lockdowns all around the world. We saw also what we see here is a recovering curve. And we divided, we decided to show you three typical uh, recovering station depending where they are. We see that airport stations down here, they recover very slow and they have the biggest reduction of frequencies. City centers, they recover, but not as much as agglomeration stations. Those stations have recovered the strongest from everyone, but still stayed around minus 17, 18% of normal. Due to this um, experience, we are now able to make some recovering forecasts for the year 2021 uh, till 22, January 22. And what we see here is our estimation, it's a forecast, please do not forget, uh, is that airport station will stay much lower than before 19. City centers will recover, but not as high as not, they will not reach the volumes of 19. The closest recovery will be and stay at the agglomeration. So now the question is, will be a change also in the behavior of uh, passenger flows. And what we see are three um, trends which will influence this development. First, we see that behavior has become more flexible. The nine to five rush hours, we think will be more even because people will more flexible, choose their time to travel. We see the homeworking trend which is here to stay. I don't know of one company that has made a bad experience about homeworking. The opposite. We see that we are able to work 
connected uh, together and also work from home. And then the big question is, on the right side, we have a national plan of developing um, the public transportation. Here on the right side, that's in Germany, there is a plan, a strategic plan to develop, to double actually the passenger flows, the passengers in the next 10 years due to sustainable projects we have in the country. So the question now is how those influences, what is the effect now and what does it mean for the investments? If we look now at the data of behavior in a daily basis, here is a station, an airport station. We see a drop of uh, by four, uh, by four hundred percent of the pedestrian flows. But we also see a different, a different curve. One may say, yes, this is now during the lockdown. That's true. But the question is, how is this change of behavior will influence the future? If we look here, a city center station, we see also a drop, but not as much as before. And if we look closely, uh, even here, we see a change of the dynamics. So we believe we have indica indices that really show from the data that the behavior, not only the peaks, so also the commuting behavior will change or has changed during this period. And now I come back uh, to the starting question in which the world keeps on changing. So how to prioritize infrastructure portfolio? We asked, um, what will be the influence of the recovery? And maybe we could show the result of the poll. Um, I would like to ask Mark to show those uh, results. Can we have this now online? Stephanie, can we have the result online? So the result is 56% for the question C. That means uh, there will be a shift in outlook uh, that depends on many factors. That means more more than half of of uh, the the people have uh, uh, said that. Then thirty eight percent concerning the answer A. That means after vaccination, passenger volumes will return to near uh, 2019 levels, and only one participant um, um, uh, have chosen has chosen the answer B. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Mark. So we see there is um, there is an issue. 60% think there will be a shift. 40% uh, think the passenger volumes will return to near 19. If so, if it will return to near 19, we can say we can keep on our investment plan as planned and we have to do nothing. But if C occurs, we believe that there should be a reconsidering of investment plans. Do we invest at the right place? Let's say I want to make a comparison to an investor. Let's say I'm an investor in, in the stock market and there is now a big influence like COVID-19 crisis. I think each portfolio manager will go now and analyze permanently the effects and the recovery. We believe the same thing should happen now with all station. So in order to know, we don't know at the moment, but we believe that detection measure in real time compares precisely and during every day by day would be is the real right task in order to consider our investment plans. So I will come back now. How does it work? How can you do it? ASC has developed this pedestrian analytics system. We connect today 
all sources of data that can matter about uh, pedestrian flows. And the good news is that most stations, most transport organizations, they have data already. First, we have a time schedule. We have national models where people live, where people work. Then we have CCTV. We have from retail a very strong source of counting system historically. What ASC does, we connect all this to this uh, pedestrian analytics system. We aggregate data and we give insights about capacity for control rooms, planning checks, and a lot of more. Let me show you um, an example of a project which is now running uh, with ASE and Deutsche Bahn. The station of Frankfurt is facing a big infrastructure project. So what we see here, we have big plans of changing mobility, changing the lines, and increasing the surfaces for public. The reason of this big project are also seen here on the right side, highly congested train station in many times of the day. And on the left, we see the importance also of other services in the station. What Deutsche Bahn did with ASC, we decided to count and measure in real time, 24 seven, the following services. We measure the platform densities, we measure the public spaces, and we measure the transportation fields for people to change trains. And from there, we have a real control room. We can serve different application. One is operation. Our measurements, they support in Frankfurt, the day-by-day oper -day operation, they show where do I have a congestion or where do I will have in the next few minutes a problem due to maybe change or delayed trains or different uh, scenarios. Those data are also an input for planning and simulation scenarios. So what I'm able to do now in Frankfurt, we can show, we can show the effect of a new scenario in a simulation model and visualize if we are still on track and what should we do for planning and for operations. During construction phase, we need the system because the problem of congestion is even stronger. We need space for the construction fields. And this is why we would like to see how can we plan a construction field during operation in the best manner also to stay operational. And of course, public and service retail services should be working um, in harmony with the operations. And that's why those are data are very important. So as we said, ASE, we are doing this kind of um, projects around Europe and also uh, in globally. And we would be very interested in having this discussion now of having more importance in measuring during now COVID-19 and the later in order to get the investment at the right place and not to miss the developments. Thank you for the listening. Thank you, thank you very much, Uri. It was very, very, very interesting, and, and uh, I've listened to that with a uh, big of interest. Very fantastic for me, and and uh, we, we we have got your message uh, in order to uh, uh, to measure uh, the the, um, uh, the the different parameters concerning that. And and you are welcome also to participate if you would like in uh, what we are doing in uh, our white paper concerning uh, concerning the new normality in the real world. So thank you, Ray, and we'll keep in touch, if you agree. Yes, I would love to uh, participate in this paper. Thank you very much. Our next speaker uh, will be Ali, Ali Al-Oliani, uh, who is a passenger operation manager 
in Saudi Railway Company, SAR. Ali is the operation manager with seven years of management experience in the railway industry. Ali applies strong analytical and critical thinking skills to solve problems, uh, very uh, complex and operational problems with working in Saudi railway companies. Ali also is also responsible to operate five passenger stations and six passenger trains along 900 kilometers in railway track in Saudi, uh, in Saudi railway company. So you have the floor, Ali. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mark, and uh, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to some of you. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, as Mark said, I'm, I'm working in Saudi railway company. My responsibility is to operate uh, five stations and the trains as well. I will give a, a short introduction about my company before going into our topic, which is predicting post-COVID passenger behavior. Uh, the main purpose why I'm giving the, the introduction, it's, it will allow you to understand uh, our method of operations. So uh, as you can see, this is, uh, this is our country, Saudi Arabia, and we basically have three main networks. Uh, the first network is, is the North Network, which link the capital real to the uh, northern area. And then the second network is from the capital real to the eastern area. And then the last network is on the western area. So uh, one of the things we are proud of is we are uh, vertically integrated because we own the whole railway infrastructure in the kingdom and we operate it at the same time. So it's very huge scope and we are really proud of it. Uh, the total length of the track is 5,500. Uh, we have five ports and 15 passenger stations, 22 maintenance workshops and 15 yards and two uh, mines. So one of the things also we are proud of is we have uh, the longest ETC is level two in the world. Uh, as you know, ETC is stand for European Train Control System. This is one of the most advanced signaling system, and it's showing our uh, priority that it is the safety of our customers, whether it's companies or, or passengers. As you know, there are a lot of advantages for this system and it's listed below. I will not go through it because our main topic is about COVID-19. So those are the three main networks that we have. The first one is the one that I'm, I'm responsible of. Uh, the length of the network is 1,250. We have six trains. The speed is 200 kph and we have six passenger station. One of them is not operational, so the current operational stations is from Riyadh to Al Juf. Uh, the main customers for this network is the families. And then the next network is the Eastern, which links Riyadh to the Eastern region. Uh, it has uh, the length of the network 733. They have 22 trains, and the speed of the network is 180 kph, and they have four passenger stations. Most of the customers in this network is commuters. Uh, the last network is HHR, which is our main network. The total length is 449 kilometer. Uh, they have 35 trains. The speed is 300. They have electrified trains, and they have five passenger stations. As you can see in my in my network, uh, the distance is very long. It's currently 900 kilometer and we have six, tra six trains. So uh, in addition to that, there are other difficult factors, or let me call it a unique risks. And based on those unique risks, we design our method of operation. So one of the unique risks that we have is the distance, the total distance and the distance between the stations. The, the minimum distance between the stations is around 150 kilometers to 200 kilometers. So it's very long and there are no uh, small towns in between to rescue in case of uh, emergency. The next uh, unique risk is the, the weather. 
the heat here it reach up to more than 50 degrees so it's very dangerous if, if the customers uh, had an emergency case in the middle of the desert the third unique risk is the geog geographical factors and uh, we used to say here that our biggest enemy is is the sand the sand is, is also one of the unique risks that we have in our network so based on those risks we designed our method uh, our method of operations so we run currently sorry before COVID-19 we used to run 20 trips per week uh, we run a, a train with the passenger and then we have uh, we have another standby train to rescue the passenger in case of emergency so this is the way we operate our station our our railway now we will go about uh, to my four agenda i will talk first about covid-19 timeline in saudi arabia and then how sar turned covid-19 into opportunity and success the third agenda is how sar was dynamically flexible with the government restriction to fight COVID-19 to ensure business continuity. And the last one, which is the most important thing about this panel, is the prediction of passenger behavior after COVID. So if we go through the, the timeline, this is the timeline of, of COVID-19 in Saudi Arabia. As you know, it started in December 2019 in China. We started the action in February. So uh, Directly, the government uh, stopped, uh, suspend the tourist visa, and then we also suspend the, the travel in the GCC country, the Gulf country, I mean. In March, we had a lot of, a lot of cases. The, the first COVID-19 case was in March, 2nd of March. And 3rd of March, we limit entry of GCC country, and then we stopped the schools. And also, we suspend the international flight, and then by 21st of March, we suspend all the, uh, the domestic flights and also the, the transportation, uh, public transportation, which includes our, our network. And then the curfew starts on 23rd of March. Uh, and then the next month, which is April, we, the whole government, including the companies, was preparing protocols for COVID-19. By mid of February, they informed us that you can resume our oper your operations by end of May, 31st of May. However, you need to follow those protocols. One of the uh, protocol conditions is to, to run 50% of the train. So uh, we use this as a very good opportunity for us to review our method of operation and change our, uh, our timetable. So as I said, before COVID-19, we were running 20 trips a week. And after that, instead of running two trains, 100% train and empty train, standby train, we run now two trains with 50% and 50%. So it was very good step to do because it helped us to, to uh, first of all, comply with the protocol. Second thing, we did not comprime, com compromise safety. The third thing, from customer point of view, we had two options instead of one trip only. Uh, from KPI point of view as well, we, we run more trips. So it was a very good step to do. Uh, and then we were allowed in May just to move between 6 a.m. till 8 p.m. So we were not allowed to run our late trips, or we called for the night trips. So we resumed again our night train trips by 1st of July. And then uh, the, in November, they allowed us to open 100% for, for the business class. So the current situation is we run 100% for the business class and 50% for the economy class, which is much better than our situation before. So uh, in addition to that, during the, the, the suspension of the passenger services, which are around 70 days, we were reviewing our antenna policies and procedures. As I said, we reviewed the timetable and we review the contracts in general to ensure that there is no uh, financial impact on the contracts. We updated the ticket policy to make sure the passengers, when they arrive to the station, they wear masks. And uh, in addition to that, we added some features in the ticketing system, like um, declaration before booking. We ask some questions. For example, have you been in the restricted countries in the previous 14 days? Or, for example, do you have any symptoms? If one of the answers is yes, we stop the booking process. So it was, we learned a lot from last year. And then 
the way we make sure that we comply with the protocol is we uh, we have internal uh, meeting with uh, with our staff to update them about any changes we have. Uh, also, by by complying with the protocol which issued by Minister of Health and Saudi uh, Center for Disease Prevention and Control, uh, we conduct also a periodical meeting with our regulator, Transport General Authority. Uh, so those are the steps we were following to make sure that we are complying with the with the protocol. Uh, and then after that, our most important question here is, what is the prediction of the passenger behavior after COVID-19? In my point of view, I believe that there are three main things will change after COVID. The first thing is the purpose of travel because the companies, they will change the, the way they have contracts with their employees. Most of them, maybe, they will work remotely. So this is the first point. The second point is the mode of transportation. People will prefer to travel where they can find bigger spaces to avoid uh, being uh, gathered and to avoid any, any, uh, any risk. And the third thing is the passenger demand. I will... The good thing is, in, in our network, most of the travelers are families. So the commuter is, is not high in my network. But in other ne networks, I believe that uh, after COVID-19, the percentage of the commuter will decrease. And uh, this may be, uh, uh, that's all what I expect from, uh, from, uh, from my presentation. I hope it was a very good uh, or useful presentation. Uh, Please feel free if you have any question to this. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Ali, for, 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 for this nice presentation. So uh, I understand that, that, that you have a very, a very deep affected in, uh, with the pandemic. Uh, and I'm uh, quite uh, astonished about your figures uh, concerning uh, uh, business. Um, uh, business class and economic class uh, that we, you, you had 100 percent of business class and uh, it was it was quite uh, astonishing because uh, so, uh, so, so some of the meetings for business uh, travels has been cancelled in uh, in some countries so so it's it will be interesting to discuss on that in the panel discussion so thank you ali very much for, for your thank presence. you our, our next speaker will be uh, Nicolas, uh, Nic Nicolas Patin from, uh, from France, uh, who is the Deputy Director of Transportation Systems and Operations at uh, the Société du Grand Paris. Uh, who, uh, he will speak about that. I, I think it is, it is a new uh, railway network around uh, the city of Paris. Since uh, March 2020, uh, Nicolas works as Deputy Director in the Transport Systems and Operational Department. From August 2015 to March 2020, he was Vice Director in charge of the National Road Maintenance and Operation Department in the French Ministry of Transport. So, so you came from road to well, is great. <laughs> I can understand very, very much that. He will speak about the subject, so how to build a transport infrastructure more resilient to sanitary crisis. So you have the floor, Nicolas. Thank you, Mark, and uh, hello, everybody. So, um, um, Société du Grand Paris uh, is a 100% state-owned uh, uh, infrastructure company. Uh, we are dedicated to finance, uh, design, and build uh, the infrastructure of Grand Paris Express. Uh, we won't be in charge of uh, exploitation and maintenance. Um, Grand Paris Express uh, will be completed by uh, 2030. The first lines uh, will be opened uh, uh, in five years, in four years, sorry. Uh, and uh, Grand Paris Express uh, uh, will have 200 uh, kilometers of uh, new uh, metro lines around Paris uh, and uh, 68 stations. Uh, the works are ongoing and 2021 will be the last year uh, for uh, civil engineering uh, contracts uh, to be published. Uh, it, uh, it will also see the rise of uh, railway works uh, that have started in uh, 2020. Uh, so um, 
basically, uh, and as a consequence, uh, we see the issue of uh, resilience uh, when uh, facing a sanitary crisis uh, with regard to the progress of the infrastructure. Uh, some solutions are uh, usable, but uh, other solutions are no longer usable for us, uh, seeing the contribution of uh, uh, infrastructure to the resilience of a transport system. So, um, we uh, and the, our teams have uh, evaluated the impact of uh, the COVID-19 crisis uh, would have on Grand Paris Express infrastructure. Uh, we have exchanged uh, with uh, different stakeholders, suppliers, uh, the Transport Authority, which is uh, Ile de France Mobilité. Uh, we have also uh, exchanged with uh, foreign networks and uh, even uh, from uh, uh, people from the uh, aerial sector, like uh, ADP. Um, and we have exchanged about solution, uh, so, and solutions. Uh, basically, we have um, followed a three-step approach. We have begun with a diagnosis of uh, the existing design. Uh, then we have uh, identified uh, potential solutions. And uh, the, the last step uh, of the study, uh, which is still uh, ongoing, uh, is uh, the evaluation of the solutions. So to start with uh, the, the diagnosis, um, Basically, uh, even though uh, individual protections, uh, like wearing a mask, uh, keeping uh, physical distance, uh, remains the most uh, efficient measure, uh, it's uh, not possible to uh, uh, guarantee the respect of uh, uh, these protections uh, everywhere and uh, uh, during uh, all uh, operations. Uh, so we have studied uh, the, our program, the Grand Paris Express program, uh, looking at the eight criteria you can see uh, uh, in this slide, uh, infected surfaces, infected airs, uh, maintainability, and so on. Um, and the result of uh, the diagnosis uh, is uh, that uh, uh, we have identified four existing assets. Uh, in uh, our design, in the design of the Grand Paris Express. Uh, the first one uh, uh, is uh, uh, that thanks to uh, uh, numerous communication equipments uh, planned, it will be possible to follow and inform travelers uh, on uh, the situation. Um, the second asset is that uh, we have uh, train stations uh, that have been designed with separate going up and going down flows and large platforms. Uh, the third one uh, is that uh, uh, the Grand Paris Express uh, program uh, enables uh, an important air renewal, 25 uh, cubic meters per hour and per person in stations, and also uh, on the trains. Uh, because uh, we, we we have uh, solutions to uh, uh, completely uh, renew uh, the air on uh, on the carriages uh, every two uh, to three minutes, and uh, the last uh, important um, uh, asset uh, is that uh, we have uh, designed equipments uh, in order to uh, enable them to be easily and rapidly cleaned. Uh, so, uh, we have a question for you, and uh, maybe is it possible to launch uh, a poll uh, for the audience? Uh, what is, uh, on your point of view, the most important infrastructure design characteristic to evaluate to reach uh, a strong resilience level? Uh, is it uh, the diverse means of monitoring and communication? Is it uh, the design of a station? Uh, is it the renewal of air in trains uh, or stations? Uh, or is it uh, the, the maintenance of uh, the equipment? So, so you have 30 seconds to, to, answer, to answer this poll. Uh, 10 seconds more for, for, for that. I do not see any questions in the Q&A qu question, so please, uh, uh, the audience, uh, uh, can you can can you put some questions? I'm sure that you are very interesting, but uh, with, with this uh, with this presentation, so do not hesitate. 
to to provide some questions for the round table which will be after after the presentations so if we see uh, the, the the results maybe nicola you 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 can see the results or not you uh, and closed yes uh, um, uh, a huge majority of uh, of the audience think that uh, renewal of air is uh, is really important uh, talking about the design um so uh it is a good transition to 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 conclude and to to have a look uh, in uh, uh, the um, the point of attention we have uh, in the infrastructure design of the Grand Paris Express, we have basically four uh, attention points. The first one is that uh, some surfaces will be in repeated contact with users, uh, especially grab bars uh, in carriages, uh, access ramps, and uh, automatic uh, ticketing machines in stations. Uh, the second one in the, is that uh, there are zones uh, in the trains, naturally, but also in the station, uh, where uh, we have uh, potential uh, uh, proximity. Uh, and uh, uh, on these areas, uh, we have uh, potential congestion. The third one is that uh, uh, we, we, we need to, uh, to have uh, more investigation uh, and more uh, uh, more solutions to uh, uh, to to investigate uh, about ventilation, uh, air ventilation, uh, in order to reach uh, a good balance uh, between uh, uh, between uh, the um, uh, the renewal and the comfort of the passengers. And the last one is that uh, is about maintainability and exploitability, because. Uh, they are really sensitive to manpower and equipment supply reductions. So uh, we have so far identified several leverages in order to respond to these challenges. Uh, they are currently under further studies. Uh, some of them have to be implemented on the, the complete transport network, uh, like uh, train station contactless routes. Uh, that is interesting to, to be uh, looked after uh, at a larger scale that uh, Grand Paris Express, the wool transport uh, system. Uh, other one, uh, like maintenance and exploitability, are mainly on uh, uh, operator's uh, responsibility. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, other solutions that have to be discussed uh, between uh, us and transport authority, authority and the offer hotels. Uh, for instance, surface treatment, um, carriage air treatment, but and also uh, supervision and monitoring of uh, pat passenger flows. Uh, we are still a bit uh, about that, and it is uh, also an important concern for us. Uh, and to conclude, um, um, about action ways and means for an infrastructure contracting authority, we believe that. Uh, uh, there are two uh, really important points. The first one is that uh, we uh, we see and we can introduce resilient uh, resilience contractual clauses in uh, our public tenders. And the second one uh, in execution phase uh, is to try to implement uh, continuous improvement processes uh, with contract owners and project management entities uh, with workshop uh, and so on. Uh, so these are the, the major outcome of uh, our ongoing study and uh, feel free to to contact us and to ask us a question about uh, about this study oh, thank you very much Nicola and this, uh, this, this is very interesting presentation so so I, I know a lot of things concerning uh, concerning design because because you are uh, you are working in a very new infrastructure, so it's um, uh, it, it is the right time to think about uh, about the design of this uh, of the stations and the trains uh, with, uh, with with ventilations, of course, because it was the first uh, the first criteria of of uh, the audience, but but also uh, the, the other uh, the topics which which are the flows in the station and, uh, and, and other topics. So thank you, Nicola, and see you uh, in the in the panel. Uh, our next speaker uh, will be uh, Hassan, Hassan Al-Mutawa, Director of Rail Operations, uh, Road and Transport Authority in the Emirates, 
So Mr. Hassan al Mutawa has more than 13 years of experience within the rail industry and is currently the director of rail operations from the Roads and Transport Authority in Dubai, RTA. Uh, being fully committed to RTA's vision, the world leader and seamless and sustainable mobility, and being in a senior role at RTA allowed him to define and direct rail agencies' strategic direction towards a totally integrated transportation solution in support of Dubai's long-term strategic development plan. So, Hassan, you have the floor for your presentation. Hi, good morning, everybody, and good evening for some. Uh, this is Hassan Mutawa, Director of Rail Operation. Thank you, Mark, for the lovely introduction. Uh, today I will speak about uh, RTA and what uh, Dubai did uh, for uh, dealing with this uh, pandemic and what is the new normal after COVID-19. Uh, this is the agenda for uh, the presentation. I will jump directly to the, to the subject. As uh, everybody knows, uh, the unprecedented pandemic uh, created a shock wave globally uh, from east to west. And uh, the governments uh, try to act quickly and uh, cleverly and uh, correctly for this, this uh, pandemic and to have the proper solution uh, about it. And uh, the most important items was collecting information from everyone, uh, every country in the, in the world to, to see how they can overcome this pandemic, not only in the health sector, but also in the transportation and military and all uh, sectors within uh, uh, the field. So what they uh, faced in the beginning that there were conflicting information uh, on the virus. So uh, there were no uh, proper judgment from a single uh, entity to see what's the outcome of this uh, pandemic. Uh, this was the largest uh, global recession since 1929. Uh, uh, too many uh, actions were done like closing the schools, the mosques, the borders, and the demand on the public transport uh, system were uh, decreased from uh, up to 90% in some cities. Uh, Speaking about the tra public transportation, uh, the pandemic was affecting the public transportation uh, very uh, much and very hard uh, due to the close of the entities within the, the cities. So we did like a benchmark within, uh, within our team in RTA and we compared what we did. And we saw there are many cities within the world, they closed the public, uh, public transportation permanently. They, some they closed, uh, they had like a lockdown some they have a limitation on, on the on the operation hours and uh, in dubai we had different uh, opportunity or we accommodate some which will which are suitable for dubai so we had uh, like uh, we had uh, like a team within a rail agency rail agency rail agency is part of the rta and rta had a, a team who look into different mode of transportation like uh, rail, uh, traffic, uh, buses, taxis, and every single mo uh, mode of transportation. So the, the aim of this team was to safeguard RTA employee and passenger and public, uh, contrib uh, co uh, contribute in public transportation and network and not affecting uh, this pandemic on the network and the, and the transportation and the mobility. Uh, RTA uh, was aiming to continue its uh, services because even when there is a lockdown in the city, People need to provide them the public transportation because it's the nerve and, and this will be the frontline transportation mood for, for the frontline uh, staff. And support Dubai Authority on the, on the, on the city level to uh, overcome this pandemic. That's why in UAE we had different structure. We had, uh, we call it ENSINA, which is the National Crisis and Emergency Authority, which look into all uh, emergency issues within the UAE. Then on, from the UAE umbrella, we cascaded down to Dubai level, which has the Dubai Crisis uh, and Management Team, which look into all the entities within Dubai, including uh, RTA, including Dubai and Water Electricity, Dubai Municipality, Dubai Police, everybody were under this umbrella and within RTA itself we created a team will, which look into day-to-day -day activity and how we plan for the upcoming event. 
the crisis management uh, committees and governance uh, coordination were clearly uh, had to set up a clear communication plan that whatever instruction came from NCMA will be followed onto, onto all the entities. But this was not the only communication plan because we they look into bottom up uh, communication because we are in the field, we are in the stations, we are in the trains, we are in the buses and everywhere in the public transportation. So they need and they grab information from our side and they seek for uh, they seek a recommendation from our side and they study it. Then they recommend it for all public transport, for all cities, for all uh, entities. That's why we had this uh, structure, which. Yani the two-way communication between the higher committee, the middle committee, and the entity itself, which is responsible for public transportation as well. What we did in RTA, we did like a best practices and benchmark among different public transport entities. So when, when we compared ourselves to others, we saw there is many actions relevant to uh, pandemic uh, actions. And uh, what's the purpose of this was to improve the understanding of the pandemic and gathering um, uh, initiative ideas. Uh, another area was capturing the social distance measures taking in, in mass transportation agencies globally and reviewing the sanitization and operational measures that being taken care of in the stations and the public uh, transport uh, modes. That's why RTA got the, uh, the first transport agency worldwide that achieved the high level of maturity of my care. My care is responsible what, on what the measures were taken the, in public transport about the, uh, the pandemic. And this based on the actions that RTA took. And these actions were reflected through the plan. RTA put a plan for the new normal. RTA were looking for the business continuity, for the health and safety, for financial uh, optimization, for digital uh, uh, optimization and digital analysis. So we put, set up like a criteria and the key initiatives about this. And we had a plan 21-23 with a main KPI for each year with target for each item. So we know we are, where are we going to. And based on that, the demand recovery in Dubai was very quick. And it was like a second fastest recovery worldwide. What RTA did, RTA implemented uh, the social distancing within uh, the stations uh, for the metro and the buses and the taxis and all modes of transportation. They uh, had intensive uh, media campaigns to educate and aware the passengers and public what to do within the mode of transportation. They had intensive um, sanitization and cleaning uh, program during the operation hours and during the maintenance hours. So we are confident that all the assets within RTA is sanitized 24 hours and there is no chance to uh, have this effect on our stations or our uh, metros or in the uh, buses or in the taxis. So the recovery was fast and what action was taken by RTA is, as was adequate for Dubai. I will not say it's, it was uh, the best, it was the best in the world, but it was adequate for Dubai because people here in Dubai, they are expecting that the service will not stop, and this is what we aim to do. Uh, in addition, that RTA was aiming, even in the lockdown, to continue the services, and we are gradually increasing the ridership step by step. We had before 650 passengers per day before the pandemic. Now we are reaching almost to 400 passengers per day in the, in the rail uh, only. And this was due to the lockdown on other entities, because now, People want to move, want to transfer, want to have the uh, clear mobility. But the uh, schools, they applied uh, social, uh, they applied the learning from a distance. Some uh, entities within uh, the Emirates, they applied work from distance. So people, they are comfortable to, to transfer um, and mobilize themselves. But the entities itself need to change the, the thinking way and to reopen again so uh, the city will become uh, clean and open for everybody. 
Um, and by this, I conclude my presentation. It was quick and it shows what RPA did during the pandemic. So thank you, thank you very much, Hassan. Uh, I, I very like your, your your first picture in the in the, in the first page of your presentation. It reminds me some picture we had also in a, in a, in some documents we have provided in UIC in the UIC COVID and in task force. Uh, and, and I'm very uh, and your last slide is very interesting also uh, concerning the demand recovery, which is com coming from 10% to 68% in Paris. So it, it, data coming from uh, from UITP, I see that. So so it's very very, very interesting uh, to that. So so you had uh, you you have also um, uh, spoken concerning the best practice around the, around the world and the application maker. Uh, so, so, so we can discuss now on the, on all these topics. So thank you very much, Hassan, for this presentation, which is uh, very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank so, you. I, I would like to to ask all the, the the presenters to switch on your cameras. There will be also in the panel uh, Andreas Melhorn, uh, who is the head of business consulting at Siemens Mobility. So, so we, Welcome for, for this discussion. So you are uh, vice president of consulting uh, uh, with a background on the strategy, digitalization and transportation. So Andreas has more than 15 years of consulting expertise for government, city authorities and operators. He's a globally renowned transportation strategic uh, with a focus on pure pioneering, uh, sorry, uh, public transport and unlocking the business impact of new technologies. So you have a PhD in strategic management and in international management degree in innovation and technology from the MIT. Congratulations. Uh, so so we are now all, 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 all around the table. Uh, Uri, maybe you can switch on your, your camera. I do not see you, Uri. Um, maybe you have, you have a problem with, with your camera. Can, can, can we put my poll, please? So uh, 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 after all these presentations, uh, the question could be, uh, do you think that rail will return to its pre-crisis passenger traffic volumes and revenues uh, in the, this year? Uh, we hope so, but I'm not sure. Uh, next year, 2023, 2024, or never. So, uh, so um, you have to answer, you have 10 seconds to, to answer this poll. Uh, it is uh, interesting to, to have your feedback on that <clears throat> in order to see what, what, what you are thinking concerning, uh, concerning uh, this, uh, this, this, this topic. So, uh, so everybody has voted. Yes, everybody around the table, the audience. So what is interesting that uh, most of the answers are 22, 23, 24. It's 24%, 29%, 24%. And uh, few of you have voted to 2025, and few of you have voted to never. It was only 10% of the audience. And of course, nobody from 2021, because uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that it would be some something something. It's, it's very interesting for for, for that uh, because because I had in mind maybe maybe we with the new ways of working or thing like that it could be also never uh, to to have uh, to 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 have the the recovery the total recovery. Uh, we can see, for example, in China in China it's, 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 they are in the total recovery now and. The, for the pandemic, but they have not yet uh, recovered their traffic. They are at uh, le less, of course, less than 100% of their traffic. It depends on what. On freight, it is more than 100% uh, than, than in passengers. So I, I have seen that, that there were some questions which have been published. Uh, there is one question coming from uh, Voices Reska. Uh, which is uh, what are the factors which can convince the passengers to use railways apart the factors involved in COVID? 
I mean, at present changes in demand, for example, due to work organizations. So what are the factors? So, so some of you, um, uh, I think it was Ali, yes, told us that there, maybe there will be a shift from rail to, to, to the car uh, because it could be also more, uh, uh, more secure or, or to have the impression that it is more secure, than, uh, for, for more safe. Uh, sorry for the word, for more safe. Okay, uh, who wants to, to answer this question? Maybe Ali. Because, because I said your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So uh, thanks, I think it's a very, very good question. Uh, and uh, I think we all try to, to do a lot of advantages in our uh, transportation mode. So we, we try to get more demand. I believe uh, one of the important thing that uh, that's, I think will be an advantage in the railway is the internet, the Wi-Fi internet. Uh, most of the people I can see in the, in the couple, the previous months inside the train, they are studying, they are attending courses, they are attending meetings inside the train. So I think maybe this is one of the advantages that could I mean, be uh, better than what you have in the cars because in the cars there is, it's not necessary if you have your own Wi-Fi or not. Uh, so I think maybe this is one of the options. I, I can't hear. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I switch off my, my microphone. So, thank you, thank you very much, Ali. Uh, and uh, 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 the assembly uh, to answer. Uh, yes, please, Hassan. Yeah, maybe people want to feel that they are safe uh, in the in the stations or in the public transport uh, mode. The entity who is responsible for this should uh, act behind and in front of the scene and yeah, they want they have before when we do the cleaning and sanitization it was in the engineering hour nobody see uh, from the public or passenger nobody see what the entity or the company is doing now i think uh, people uh, should know this and uh, and the entity should reveal what they are doing in terms of keeping the asset uh, clean sanitized safe and uh, send uh, like a trust message and, and grab the attention of the public that uh, using these kind of uh, moods uh, will not uh, harm you. The asset is safe, you can transfer. Uh, however, you should take your own measures as well. Uh, wearing the mask, uh, uh, keeping the social distance, two meter or one and a half meter. Uh, so, so there are some actions which are required from the entity, some actions required from the government, and some actions required from the uh, public users uh, as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I, I see there is Andreas who has switched on his microphone, and yes, Andreas, for sure. I mean, I agree to, to, to the speakers. I, uh, uh, I think we would just like to add one thing. I mean, rail will be the backbone of um, transport, and also when it comes to long distance transport, if you look at the regulation, there's just a physics behind, you know. Uh, of course, the demand will not grow as deep as we have assumed two years ago. Uh, but even if it doesn't grow that uh, steep as we have assumed, it will still come back to 29 figures. Uh, what I think will be the major changes is that, and I think a lot of you colleagues already do this, but, you know, looking at Dubai or also at the Saudi colleagues, I think rail will be more integrated into an end-to-end -end travel it, because the customer is not only looking at the train when he thinks about confidence or trust in public transport, he thinks about his entire travel. Yeah, and, and, you know, rail will be the backbone. There's just physically no, no alternative in urban environments just to the density and to the space requirements, uh, no alternative to, to what we do. But it will be a little bit more diverse. I think the boundaries between rail-based public transport and car-based transport is blurring. You know, all these new mobility modes were coming up, especially autonomous shuttle will play a major role in five to 10 years. So not, not as a fight against public transport, but as, as a feeder system for the backbone. And I think this will be the changes that we have to look at, you know, make it a little bit more integrated, you know, we have to think about this new mode and especially have to think about platforms, mobility as a service platform, 
in order to offer this flexibility to the customer. He wants to have choices, and, and I think this will be the, the changes that we will all see. Uh, but I, we don't expect, you know, the reverse of the mega trend of public transport. Uh, it will come back, you know, coming to your question at the beginning, I, we think it's 22, uh, but at the end it will come back to a normal development path, not as deep as we have all thought. Probably the peak times are a little bit, not that dramatic as we have all forecasted, but still the organization is going on and, and there's still, you know, not reverse of a mega trend that, that we see on the market. Yeah, thank you. Uh, who wants to, to give? Uh, I yes, would, would like to add. Um, so uh, I we we are one of the um, the companies, or I was clicking on twenty twenty five, and I would like to uh, ask why. Um, of course, uh, there is no way around public transportation. I saw I know countries which um, uh, did. Uh, invest late in public transportation, and but the result is that uh, road traffic is uh, in traffic jams, so you lose a lot of time. People know that there is a huge benefit and they will use public transportation, no doubt about it. Um, but out of our recovery models, which we are doing in many stations, we found out, um, we think the recovery will go into a minus 10, minus 15% of what we saw till uh, COVID-19. And we think the effect is connected to change of behavior. Uh, one of the most uh, strongest uh, part is homeworking. So we think, let's say uh, a person who works in an office will take one day in a week, plus minus, which he says, I work from home. Of course, not everybody can do work home, uh, home working, but still, there will be an effect. So what we need to wait for is the natural growth, which we faced in the last years. And again, we saw this growth around 2 to 3% in Western Europe, for instance. And that's how I come. Uh, we can compensate this uh, home working trend by the natural growth. And that's why I think it will take more than around... Uh, not two years, but we think more around uh, five years time. Yeah, yes, you are, you, are, you are very right. There, there is a natural growth, and uh, and, and, and uh, we, we, we which uh, you, you said twenty twenty five. Why not? Why not for for, for the same traffic of uh, two thousand nineteen? So so I, I keep your figure in my mind uh, for minus ten minus fifteen percent. Uh, of um, of uh, public transport, uh, uh, we have to take also into account that, that uh, uh, there are only part of the jobs which uh, where, where you can uh, work at home. Uh, may, may, maybe uh, 20, 30 percent of the jobs, but but not uh, 70 percent. I, I do not know the figure, but but it would be more, more than that. So, Nicolas, you would like to have the floor? Yeah, maybe a, a short, uh, short statement about that. Uh, I agree with uh, with uh, Andreas and uh, Hassan. I think that uh, a key word uh, is confidence. We have to ensure that uh, travelers and customers are confident uh, uh, in in traveling uh, in uh, in uh, our railways. Uh, and uh, the key to reach uh, good confidence is to uh, to deliver services. Uh, uh, and uh, in these services, our customers, our travelers, uh, will trust uh, in what we do in order to uh, to enable uh, them to have a, a safe uh, journey. And uh, maybe a, a solution for the industry is to uh, think about some uh, maybe standards or something like that uh, about uh, about safety. It is something that uh, it is. Uh, uh, really uh, spreadly used uh, uh, in uh, the road fields, in the aerial, aerial fields, and uh, maybe we can think about uh, things like that in order to uh, uh, install confidence and install co good comparison, good comparison uh, between different uh, networks or operators in order to show that uh, uh, we all are doing uh, a lot of efforts about that.
Yeah, thank you, Nicola. But I, I, I will go further than, 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 than you said. You said you said to to increase the services, but in my, I think maybe maybe there are three uh, topics in order to 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 give confidence to the to the passenger. The first is the design. So it is what you are doing uh, with, with your with your new project uh, in the Grand Paris. Uh, the second, of course, is the services, and the third one is communication. Uh, communi communicate is very important to give confidence also to the uh, to the passengers. The communication of what you are doing, communication within the stations also with, with pictograms, with uh, uh, something like that, or in the trains also. Yes. So there is another, somebody would like to, Andreas, yes. Just, just to add on communication, but also great confidence. I think uh, us and Ali probably have, you know, a good situation because when it comes to Dubai World Expo and when it comes to pilgrimship, I mean, this could be a situation where you really could show how the new future would work like. I know a lot of people coming to your country, you know, where, 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 where they want to have a, an experience, you know, in your lovely country. And I think th if we jointly can manage this major events within the next uh, one to two years, because this is where people will experience how it will work. This is where they will still be a little bit hesitating and still be a little bit nervous. But I think, you know, we all have these kind of major events uh, around the world. I think this is something where we really have to focus on because people will look at this, like in Munich Oktoberfest, uh, the yearly program trip, the World Expo. <laughs> can do this right jointly as an industry with the operators, the associations in the industry. I think this is where we can show what, what Nicolas probably mentioned with confidence. This is where we can back and communicate that uh, that's a still a safe way to uh, to live and to travel. But I think we have to take this occasion seriously and and, and show how it works to the, to the public. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. So I'm, I'm not a futurist. And uh, I do not know how, how, how the mentalities will evolve or maybe will come back. So because you spoke about Oktoberfest, uh, which is one festival in uh, the beer festival in Germany, in Munich. Uh, so, so one of the, the biggest in the world. Uh, so yes, uh, there, there, there is another question in the, in the Q&A, uh, which is uh, how do you think that the pandemic will affect the transport industry with more companies uh, adopting agile working ideologies. So if somebody would like to uh, answer this question. So I'm sorry, Anas, you, you, you don't have a very important success with, with your question. Maybe um, a, sh a short, uh, a short view or a short answer. I think that uh, uh, the pandemic is also, and we have seen a lot of uh, solutions that are emerging, that are emerging on a, a trend that has been launched uh, years ago. Talking about services, uh, uh, everybody know of uh, solutions and uh, services about. Uh, um, frequentation and uh, volume of people uh, uh, on the trains and so on. So uh, I think that the situation have uh, pushed everybody uh, in the industry uh, to to find new ways to to cope with uh, uh, with uh, this difficulty. So uh, it, it may have uh, f uh, faster uh, the. Uh, uh, the uh, ongoing of uh, new solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, concerning industry, there, are, uh, there, there is also the rolling stock industry. Uh, I've seen uh, in this um, in, in this event there is also a panel for rolling stock. Uh, maybe you have some inputs concerning rolling stock, Andreas. Yeah, I mean, I would just like to agree to Nicolas and also what Ali mentioned. I think besides all the you know, the bad things happening now with the pandemic when it comes to innovation and technology, I think there's a major boost now, especially when it comes to digitalization. I mean, the trend was already there before and it would have happened anyhow, but you know, as a railway industry, it, it's not the fastest. <laughs> so it would have uh, taken probably a little bit longer, but now we see an acceleration of, the, of, of, this, of this entire technology chain. 
you know, we see discussion with customers much quicker, much faster than they have been before. So I think technology-wise, we will see a boost in the industry, uh, uh, especially when it comes to non-hardware-based uh, uh, solutions like digitalization. Uh, and the second, maybe a little bit longer trend is, uh, of course, you will also see some changes within the rolling stock, you know, modern hardware industry. I mean, especially topics that we discussed also for years, like flexible interior designs. I think when you look at social distancing and next pandemic, I think you will also not only find in the digital space, but also in a way how we, how we design train interiors in a more flexible way, both for the end comer, but also for the operators in order to clean it in situation of pandemic. So also these things will accelerate, but a major acceleration will be in digitalization. And then we see, uh, we see also the rolling stock and the hardware design concepts uh, changing within the next five to six years. Okay, so digitalization is, uh, and also maybe Internet of Things, maybe also artificial intelligence are, are, are keywords uh, which, uh, we, 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 which are used uh, now, now, now for that. And, and maybe we can also use the trend as a rolling office. Uh, well, why not? More, 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 more than today, if, if people um, uh, would like to, to, to work at home or to have remote meeting, maybe they would like also to use the trend more than office uh, office and now and maybe it will affect the design of, uh, of the rolling stock and the, the the design of the services which are which are in the trends maybe so 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 you are an expert on that because you are from Siemens. Yuri yes i would like to support uh, andreas uh, words there so about digitalization social uh, distancing systems we see, we definitely see now a boost. Clients uh, are very interested in knowing exactly where people are at any moment and predicting uh, the flows for the next minutes, um, like 10, 20 minutes, depending on train, train arrival schedules, delays and everything. And we see there uh, really how fast it can uh, run and support the operations to separate uh, congestions before they are cured, and that's uh, uh, we believe this trend will be uh, very strong. Mm -hmm. It's also it's not only a good thing uh, for uh, social distancing; it also increases the um, the service level. The how do you feel about when you walk through a station and you have good flows, you have good clear way uh, finding um, instead of congested rail stations. So. There's two effects. You give also a little bit more comf comf comfortability for the passengers and the better service, which increases the trust in rail. Okay, thank you, thank you. And, and in our uh, LinkedIn wor working group um, uh, concerning concerning COVID nineteen, there, there was also um, a discussion concerning concerning that concerning concerning the flows and and how, how to predict. Uh, uh, the congestion in the platforms. So, and, and so, 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 some countries have, have done a very inter interesting uh, uh, things on that uh, on that topic in uh, South Korea and, uh, and in, uh, in other countries. So, uh, so I don't know if you see, see any question, any more question in in, in the chat. Uh, um, uh, maybe a question to, to, to Andreas, which is uh, how should public transport uh, operator act to restore resilience? Maybe a uh, deep dive into digitalization, it is what you said. Well, I mean, uh, I think it's a summary of what the colleagues already said. I, I think the operators, I mean, they have two fields to act. In, uh, the one is regarding the end customer, because this is where, you know, our, our customers gain confidence and trust. When I look at, you know, this angle, so it's about taking into account the entire trip, you know, from the pre-trip planning, where you probably can discuss about digital solution that shows you how to make a COVID safe trip. You know, it starts with trip planning because this is where confidence starts. It doesn't start with entering the train. It's not much before when you sit at home and think about what to do. So, Take into account the different steps, you know, the pre-trips, then the on-trip, but also, you know, the last mile solution. So I think if you can handle this for your customer in a, in a safe, but also, as Uri mentioned, in a convenient way, 
I think this brings back trust. So this is the one part. And the second part is also, and this is also of utmost importance, it's not only the passenger, it's also your operational team, your staff. I mean, how we plan our operations, uh, there are solutions. How we dispatch the things. I think public transport will be also in the operation much more demand responsive because you need to be flexible how much people can be in within a train. You need to have flexible timetables. And then, of course, within the service business, you know, how to clean trains, but also how to manage in an efficient way predictive maintenance. I think these are the two areas. One is, and we talk a lot about this, it's all regarding the end customer. There, the key message is you know, take the entire trip into account. So confidence starts at home and ends at home. And, and the second is don't forget about your own operational process, uh, not only because of the health and safety of your people, but also in order to make the entire rail operation more demand responsive, more predictive, so that you can react in cases of pandemics or in case of non-pandemics, you can use the the flexibility when it comes to maintenance and to operations even more. I think these are the two fields uh, and there are solutions out there. And, and we are, of course, yeah. to discuss this. I think the whole industry is now, according according also what Mark said at the UIC, we are now all there to support because, I mean, I personally believe in this quick coming back, but it will not come automatically. So, I mean, let's get together and uh, and do some new stuff together. Okay, so thank you, Andreas. So now, now it's time to close this, this panel. So thank you, thank you all of you for, for, for your presentations, for what, what you said to answer the questions and also what, what is your, 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 your feeling concerning, uh, concerning the best practices, concerning the prediction of what could be the future and, and how also to, uh, to influence the, the, the future concerning, uh, uh, concerning these pandemics and what could be the result uh, maybe in two, three years uh, uh, concerning, concerning, concerning that. So thank you very much. Uh, all, normally, all the presentations are available to download from the handout section. I, I've seen that there were some, some questions concerning that also, so I hope that uh, administrators will so, solve this question. Um, uh, the next session, there will be one session at 1 p.m. Uh, Paris time, uh, of course, because I'm in Paris, <laughs> uh, which concerns intermodal uh, collaboration for seamless passenger experience. So it will focus on other topics, which are very interesting also, which are ticketing, regulation, international travel, open data, competition, and one o'clock. So I'm very impatient to hear these panelists. There will be also a session concerning uh, the new communication system FRMCS, uh, which is which is a system which has been developed uh, by uh, by UIC uh, with, with, with some uh, with some industries uh, for the new communication system, uh, radio communication system, and, and also uh, there there is a technical review uh, with round tables for all metro and round tables for unipart a keynote session intermodal collaboration for seamless passenger experience. I, I think it is also uh, the same at one o'clock, one p.m. Paris time. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I will not uh, summarize what, what what you said because it was it was very 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 interesting and very very. Um, very dense. Uh, thank you, Uri, thank you, Andreas, thank you, Nicolas, thank you, Ali, and thank you, Hassan, for, for this uh, panel and this information. Bye-bye. Thank you.